Hello everyone, Richard here, and welcome to episode 2 in the second edition of my Killing Floor 2 perk guide. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Demolitionist. The Demolitionist makes a return appearance in Killing Floor 2, providing your team with extremely powerful ordnance, ranging from grenade launchers and plastic explosives, all the way up to anti-tank weaponry. While it can be a very fun perk to use, it also requires a bit of in-game knowledge to use properly. Otherwise, you risk making matters more difficult for your team. For passive abilities, the Demolitionist gains 1% perk weapon damage per level, 2% explosive resistance per level, 1 additional explosive ammo per 5 levels, the ability to supply each teammate a single grenade per round, the ability to turn welded doors into explosive traps, and reactive armor which detonates upon reaching 0 HP once per wave and restoring you back to 5 HP. The additional damage with perk weapons is typical for all perks excluding the medic, with the explosive resistance being very helpful at preventing you from killing yourself with close range detonations of C4, grenades and other weapons. You should still be wary of detonating explosives nearby, as the damage will add up very quickly if you aren't careful. The additional ammo is also very helpful for the RPG and C4, as they have low absolute ammo values. While the effect is less pronounced but still welcome for weapons like the M79 and the Seeker 6. Door traps are situational and require coordination with your team. Welding doors can often trap your team in a retreat if placement is not done with care. Reactive armor, despite its name, does not require the purchase of armor and will detonate once you reach 0 HP, emitting a moderately powerful explosion from your position. This will kill trash and larger zeds on their last legs, but otherwise won't do much in very dire situations. The demo's grenade, the half stick of dynamite, is quite useful when cornered due to its instant detonation upon contact with a zed. While it deals the same amount of damage as the commando's high explosive grenades at 300, with around two thirds of the explosive radius, it packs much more stumble and stunning power. This allows you to put distance between you and any unfortunate survivors and gives you a chance to bring your main weapons to bear. Against Scrakes and Flesh Pounds, the easiest way to secure a stun with the half stick is by throwing the dynamite to impact the legs. This will guarantee a stun regardless of skills and difficulty. Moving on to skills, the demo's skill tree, like the medics, is divided up nicely from left to right. The left side favors increased damage and reliable killing potential, especially against bigger foes, while the right side is considered to be more oriented towards crowd control. In all honesty, the general consensus is that the left side of the tree is the far superior option, as the Demolitionist has the unique ability to handle Scrakes, Flesh Pounds, and even groups of Flesh Pounds using all the left side skills. While the additional trash cleaning potential is definitely there on the right side of the tree, Evidenced by larger blast radii, more ammo, faster reloads, and increased in-cap, the loss in damage potential is pretty devastating, and there are much better trash cleaners found in the SWAT and especially the Commando. Armor piercing rounds and high impact rounds in particular provide a substantial boost to your high value target killing potential, especially with a lucky or well placed shot, but we will discuss this in greater detail later on. For weapons, the demo has quite a big selection ranging wildly in usefulness. Instead of going through each weapon, I will highlight the most powerful and useful on perk and off perk weapons you should consider for the demo. The starting weapon, the HX25, is a small 25mm multi shot grenade launcher, capable of handling small clusters of a few clots, crawlers, and stalkers, but lacking significantly past that often requiring follow-up shots or the use of your 9mm. In all honesty, the bloat and rioter should both be handled with your pistol or by a teammate better equipped for the job, as both enemies will require a ludicrous amount of HX 25 rounds to subdue. One saving grace for the HX is its very high damage melee bash, a common trend for the demolitionist weapons. C4 will be your next useful weapon available to the demo providing on-command explosive power with the pull of a remote detonator. While a bit clumsy at first, their ability to stick to zeds and surfaces, as well as C4's extremely stable nature, allow it to be very flexible as both a quick way to bring down flesh pounds and a boss's HP, 
as well as a trap for lesser enemies if no flesh or quarter pounds present themselves. Paired with an RPG or by themselves, C4 is extremely powerful at bringing down flesh pounds, being able to slay even the toughest with relative ease. Quarter pounds, while more likely to outmaneuver your throne C4, will fall easy prey to a pair regardless of difficulty and player amount. Keep in mind that there is a 3 second cooldown after a Zed receives explosive damage. Within that cooldown, C4 explosions will receive a 0.75 damage multiplier. This cooldown does stack, meaning following explosions will receive an additional 0.75 multiplier. So remember to spread out your detonations for the best effect. The RPG will be the next weapon you'll be wanting to use from the Demolitionist weapon selection providing incredible amounts of explosive damage with additional impact damage as well. While the business end of the RPG will provide most of its killing power, the back of the RPG will also emit a damaging backblast to any Zeds attempting to sneak up on you. Upgrading this to Tier 5 also provides even more potential to your crowd control and abilities to deal with high value targets. Like with all demolitionist weapons, upgrading the RPG will not only increase damage, but the blast radius as well. While it only provides a 10% increase to both, the extra damage does allow for more consistent kills, and allows you to single shot scrakes with headshots assuming you've taken my suggestion on skills. Moving on to off perk weapons useful to the demolitionist, prior to the introduction of the upgrade system, it was fairly common to see high skill level demos using a 500 Magnum. However, with the added utility from upgrading the RPG and the necessity of using C4, the Desert Eagle has taken over as the primary backup weapon for the demo. While you won't gain any bonuses for using it as a demo, its high damage and ability to quickly and cleanly dispense trash that gets too close for comfort makes it extremely important as otherwise you may be forced to waste explosive ammo or resort to your far less powerful 9mm. Those who play Gunslinger may have trouble adjusting to the increased recoil, but overall the Deagle is a powerful sidearm that any demolitionist would be smart to include in their arsenal. For an alternative main weapon, playing the demo you can use the Seeker 6 purely for its trash killing and impact damage potential, but overall is considered to be far inferior in most situations to the combination of the tier 5 RPG, C4, and Desert Eagle. So why not recommend the M79, M16, and Pulverizer? For starters, the Pulverizer should be a no-brainer. Not only are you fragile and slow, but your melee attacks are still relatively weak, and the Pulverizer has been a buggy weapon since its inception, often more powerful without ammo loaded into it. For the M79, it simply is too cumbersome to hold down a lane and deals too little damage to handle big Zeds, especially considering its reloads can be painful even with Shock Trooper. Commandos with a comparable tier weapon provide more consistent trash killing capabilities with the added utility of Zed Time extensions, something the demo cannot compete with. The M16 unfortunately is just too heavy and too weak to be useful. While the 40mm does receive damage bonuses from skills and passive perk bonuses, the actual rifle does not, mitigating much of its usefulness as a backup weapon. Plus, despite the M79 and M203 both being 40 mics, the 203 will only deal 5 extra damage with a much more severe damage drop off and a pathetic blast radius to boot. While all the demo's explosive weapons have a quadratic damage fall off, the M203 is cubic, meaning much of its explosive power is lost in a much smaller radius. For weapon progression and loadouts, the most straightforward approach is the C4, RPG, Desert Eagle, finishing off with an upgrade for the RPG. While lacking the Desert Eagle may leave you vulnerable to fast moving Zeds, Melee Bash on the RPG due to its heavy weight and additional bonuses from skills allows it to decap Gorefast with one hit. Moving on to strategy, there are a lot of considerations when playing the demo, more so than I think other perks, especially when it comes to placement and timing. For example, while Destroyer of Worlds Z time ability is very powerful, Dropping a nuke near a Berserker can prevent him from maintaining his parry bonus and dramatically reduce his damage output and resistance. 
Also, avoid interfering with commando and sharpshooter lanes, as commandos need trash zeds on hand to maintain zed time extensions, and sharpshooter's aim will be disrupted by screen shake from explosions as well. In addition, explosions tend to stumble zeds, which can further disrupt a player's aim and be the difference between a hit and a miss. Generally, you should avoid shooting Scrakes unless you know you can instantly decap it with a single RPG. Many have probably seen players unwittingly, or perhaps unintentionally, fire grenade launchers at them, causing minimal damage and likely resulting them in raging towards the now helpless demo. On Hell on Earth, with 6 players, a tier 5 RPG wielded by a level 25 demo can successfully decapitate a Scrake with a single RPG round, regardless if it detonates. Be careful attempting this at long range as even the slightest change in elevation or direction can lead to a miss or even worse, a direct hit to the torso, failing to fully kill the Scrake and enraging him. Alternatively, with the unupgraded RPG, a Scrake on Hell on Earth with 6 players can be decapitated with a single rocket plus 5 9mm rounds or 2 Desert Eagle rounds. Using this method may result in the Scrake prematurely raging, so plan accordingly. Your biggest targets besides large groups of trash sets are flesh pounds. Not only do they take additional explosive damage, but they are also vulnerable to being knocked down by an RPG shot to the leg, which will have double the knockdown power versus the arms, torso, and head. On a 6 player Hell on Earth game, this can be followed up by 2 well timed C4 detonations or 3 when using an unupgraded RPG. In the case that a Fleshbound has been knocked down within roughly the past 7 seconds, targeting the head or chest core will provide the most amount of damage, since the knockdown end cap will still be in cooldown. Against bosses, you remain relatively effective granted enough space for your warheads to actually detonate. The Patriarch, King Fleshbound, and Hans Volter are all relatively susceptible to RPGs and explosives especially if you can target weak zones effectively like the Patriarch's left upper arm or Hans Volter's head. C4 can also be thrown on the Patriarch to betray his position, in the event that you lack a commando or he has already been killed off. While not nearly as effective as actually being able to see him, the audio and visual cue will help your team keep him on the back foot. Overall, the Demolitionist is about restraint, trigger discipline, and timing. Be considerate of other players and especially keep in mind what each perk needs to function and what it brings to the table, as this will help you remain a productive and devastating member of your team, as opposed to a screen shaking, scrake raging nuisance. Generally, demos are looked down upon as they can cause chaos, not to the Zeds, but to your own team. Having a good understanding of your strengths and an even better understanding of your weaknesses, you should have no problem blowing the enemy away. Thank you very much for watching, join me next time when we take a look at the SWAT. In the meantime, let me know how you like to play the Demolitionist and what your favorite weapons are. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Killing Floor 2 subreddit and many of the controlled difficulty players who have helped make this video possible. Thank you again for watching, but until next time, happy hunting.